For those of you that have been living under the rock, Mookie Betts and David Price are now members of the only team that actually plays in Los Angeles. But if only it was that easy. This trade was supposed to be finished about a week ago, but after some unforeseen backlash, unethical leaking of players' medical information, and a whole lot of mess-ups, it was delayed until all the teams were finally able to put something together. Now that we have had some time to digest all of this information, it's time for a full trade analysis. So what's going on everybody, it's Dawson, and today we are going to be discussing the disaster that is the Mookie Betts trade, including how we got here, what's next for the Red Sox and Dodgers, the corresponding moves, and what this means for Mookie Betts' free agency. Let's go ahead and get started. I am sure that a lot of Red Sox fans and baseball fans in general are still confused on the real reason why Mookie Betts was traded. Yes, after this year Mookie Betts will become a free agent. Yes, the Red Sox had the worst farm system in baseball. And yes, the Red Sox were not going to compete with the Yankees this year even if they kept him. While all of those circumstances contributed a small part to Mookie Betts being traded, none of those were the main reason. The main reason is money. Yes, a baseball franchise valued at over $3 billion had to trade away an MVP talent because of financial reasons, and no, that was not sarcasm. Leading up to the Red Sox World Series run in 2018 and slightly after, they made a lot of short-sighted decisions. JD Martinez signed for nearly $24 million a year, Price for around $30 million a year, Avaldi for $17 million a year, Sale for $30 million a year, and most recently, Bogarts for $20 million million a year. And while they were making a lot of these deals to help out their chances of winning a World Series, their farm system was completely cleaned out. Oh, and let's not forget, they are still paying Pablo Sandoval $5 million a year to not play for them after that horrendous deal they offered him in the 2014 offseason. And all of that played into the luxury tax, which helped the Red Sox realize that now it was the time to trade Mookie Betts. Looking at the highest team payrolls heading into 2020, the Red Sox are currently listed at 5th, with a total 2020 payroll of over $177 million. And for a team that is currently projected to win 85 games, which is a really generous projection, having a payroll within the top 5 in baseball is bad. But let's say the Red Sox decided to keep Mookie Betts and David Price. What would have happened then? Let's start with Price. In December of 2015, Price and the Red Sox agreed to a 7-year, $217 million contract, which at the time, was the largest contract ever given to a pitcher. Price had a player opt out after 2018, but of course he decided to keep his contract and stay. With 3 years left on his deal, the Red Sox would have been paying him $32 million a year going into his age 36 season. This would mean the Red Sox would have paid two guys in their rotation over $62 million a year, which is nearly $16 million more than what the entire Miami Marlins roster is making this year. Betts will be a free agent after this season. This year he is making $27 million and it is projected that he will make Mike Trout money when he becomes a free agent. The Red Sox did try multiple times to extend bets, and it was reported that he countered the Red Sox offers with 12 years, $420 million. The chance that Betts would have gotten that kind of offer from the Red Sox and re-signed is minuscule, but for the sake of this video we can assume that if the Red Sox were able to extend Betts, it would have been for well over $30 million a year. If Betts and Price were still members of the Red Sox, their total 2020 payroll would have been around $240 million, which is just shy of the New York Yankees for the number one spot. This would have placed the Red Sox in the second tier of the competitive balance tax threshold, which taxes teams at a 62% rate. Any move of significance to help the Red Sox compete for another championship would have put them past the third competitive balance tax threshold, meaning the Red Sox would have been taxed at a 92.5 to 95% rate. If Betts was extended for let's say $350 million for the next 10 years, it would have been nearly impossible for the Red Sox to remain below the third competitive balance tax threshold for the next few years. So with taxes included, Mookie Betts would have cost the Red Sox 
at least 200 million within the first three years of his deal but with trading bets in price the red sox are able to reset their tax rate and get down to 20 percent which will benefit their chances of winning in the long term all right enough about taxes let's get into the mess that was this past week february 4th 2020 9 10 p.m news of a red sox deal to send mookie Betts and david price to the dodgers was announced as news of the return package began to come out, the Red Sox began to get absolutely bashed. But the trade was not quite done yet. The Twins hopped on as a third team in the trade to get some starting pitching. The first draft of the trade looked like this. Dodgers received Mookie Betts and David Price from the Red Sox. The Red Sox received Dodgers outfielder Alex Verdugo and Twins reliever Brutusar Greaterall. And the Twins would receive Dodgers right-hander Kenta Maeda. In a corresponding move, the Dodgers were prepared to send Jock Peterson to the Angels. While the players involved were ready to head off on their new journey, the trade came crashing down. Brutusar Greaterall is one of the bigger pieces involved in this deal. He was a top prospect in the twin system with some electric stuff out of the bullpen. Yes, bullpen. While Brutusar didn't perform that well when he was called up last season, he only pitched 9.2 innings in 10 games. The Red Sox saw Greaterall as more of a starter than a reliever, which... I mean, the guy missed two months with a bad shoulder, has already had Tommy John surgery, and is known for his strange whipping motion to produce his high velocity. But anyways, when the Red Sox received his medical report, they were a bit ticked off. Concerned with the overall package they were receiving, they asked the Twins for another top 10 prospect. And when the twins received that call, I can only assume they replied like this. <laughs> oh my goodness. When all of this information was leaked to the public, the sparks began to fly. MLB Players Association director Tony Clark put together a statement saying, The proposed trades between the Dodgers, Red Sox, Twins, and Angels need to be resolved without any further delay. The events of this last week have unfairly put several players' lives in a state of limbo. The unethical leaking of medical information, as well as the perversion of the salary arbitration process, serve as continued reminders that too often, players are treated as commodities by those running the game. And Tony Clark is 100% right. For nearly a week, players didn't know whether to pat their bats for Arizona or Florida for spring training. Greater All's medical information shouldn't have been leaked, and you can bet that all of this will be brought up in next year's CBA discussions. As if this whole situation couldn't get any worse, a report came out that Red Sox ownership was surprised by the unforeseen backlash after trading away one of their best players in franchise history. Red Sox GM Heim Bloom was quick to shoot that report down, citing that Mookie was an important part of the team, and of course that they knew this would come with fan backlash. However, a lot of the backlash from the original trade was not because they were trading Mookie bets. This was a move that we could see coming for a while now based off the structure of the Red Sox future payroll. A lot of the backlash came from the fact that the Red Sox were receiving what looked like a very light return for trading away one of the best players in baseball. Trading away a star player will always be met by upset fans, but trading away a star player for the original package the Red Sox agreed to is even worse. Thankfully, for the sake of the Red Sox, the original trade was at a stalemate until a few days later. At this point, it seemed like a trade between the teams was close to falling apart. Motivated to get a deal done, the Dodgers decided that it was worth it to give up a little bit more than intended. Then, the final trade was approved. In the final draft of the trade, the Dodgers still received Mookie Betts and David Price along with some cash. The Red Sox received Alex Verdugo, catcher Connor Wong, and LA's number two prospect in Jeter Downs. Yes, ha 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 ha, a guy with the name Jeter playing for the Red Sox. And in a corresponding move, the Twins trade for right-hander Kenta Maeda, $10 million, and a minor league catcher, Jer Camargo. In return, the Dodgers received Brutusar Greaterall, minor league prospect Luke Rayleigh, and the number 67 pick in the 2020 MLB Draft. There's a lot to unpack here, but let's start off with the return package for Boston. If anything, there is one thing for certain. This return package is a lot better than the original. The Red Sox are still able to receive Alex Verdugo, who had a very solid year last year. 
he is entering his age 24 season and won't be a free agent until 2025. Verdugo has shown the ability to consistently make solid contact, and his strong arm is a weapon in the outfield. His projections show that he can be a very solid everyday outfielder, with raw potential of becoming a future all-star. Jeter Downs is probably the most interesting piece in this trade. Last offseason, he was sent to the Dodgers from the Reds as a part of the Yasiel Puig trade. Downs has shown the ability to do a little bit of everything. While I was looking through his scouting report, I found that although he does a lot of things pretty well, he doesn't exceed in one signature area like a lot of top prospects do. Downs is still 21 years old, and he was able to reach AA last year in the Dodgers system. Along with Verdugo, he will likely end up being a very solid everyday player with all-star potential. How much he is able to develop his many tools in a new organization will have the biggest impact on his future. The last piece is Connor Wong. The 23-year-old Wong turned some heads last year at the end of last season when he was called up to AA. In 40 games, he had a slash line of 349, 393, and 604. While he is listed as a catcher, Wong has the ability to play second and third base as well, which could turn him into a very versatile bench piece. Now for the Dodgers. Mookie Betts is Mookie Betts, and I don't really think that needs much explaining. But one thing to look out for this season is to see how Betts adjusts to playing in the National League. Taking a look at Betts' stats in interleague play, he has actually performed slightly better. However, when you are adjusting to a new league, we have seen hitters in the past struggle at the start. Now I'm not saying it'll be that way for Betts, but it is something to look out for. If it does happen, it can put a dent on his price tag in free agency, which we will get into later. Although the Dodgers did end up forking over Jeter Downs to the Red Sox, at least the Red Sox will be paying half of David Price's contract until it is up following the 2022 season. This does take Price into his age 36 season, which is cause for some concern, especially after last year. In 22 games with the Red Sox last season, he finished with a 4.28 ERA, a 1.314 whip, and his hits per nine saw a dramatic increase. Getting at least half of Price's contract off the payroll was a necessity for the Red Sox, and is one of the bigger reasons why the return package for Boston doesn't look that strong. This isn't to say that Price still can't be a decent player on a contending team, but there certainly are concerns. Along with bets, this will be Price's first year in the National League, and it looks like he will be in the middle or towards the back end of the rotation for the Dodgers going into the spring. But what about the Twins? Giving up Brutusar Greaterall does sting a little bit, but honestly, I'm okay with it. He is still young, but concerns with his shoulder will follow him into LA. He does have the potential to take over for Kenley Jansen, but that potential does look a little bit shaky. Giving up the 67th pick shouldn't hurt the Twins that much either. After all, it is a compensation pick. This is assuming the Dodgers don't draft an all-star with that pick, but based off historical odds, I'll take my chances. In return, the Twins were able to land starter Kenta Maeda, who will fit right into their rotation. The pitching depth will certainly help when we get into the dog days of July and August. Also, Maeda's contract is very affordable. He will be making $3 million every year until he is a free agent after the 2023 season. On top of that, the Twins received $10 million. The minor leaguers attached to the deal, outfielder Luke Rayleigh and catcher Jer Camargo, are not very strong prospects. Camargo will be heading to the Twins, and Rayleigh will be heading to the Dodgers. Both do have a valid chance to make it to the majors one day, but the chances of them making an impact are slim. Oh yeah, what about Jock Peterson and Ross Stripling going to the Angels? Whatever happened to that trade? Turns out, Angels ownership became impatient and decided to call off the trade. So now, Jack Peterson and Ross Stripling are going to feel pretty awkward returning to a team that was ready to ship them off a week ago. But as for the trades that did happen, how is it looking overall? Well, for the Dodgers, I see this as an absolute win. Sure, Price probably won't be near the player that he used to be, but this trade wasn't designed for him. I'd expect Betts to have a typical Betts season, if not better, heading into his walk year. While Betts has admitted signing a long-term extension with the Dodgers isn't on his mind at the moment, which of course it's not, he literally just got here, I wouldn't take it out of the realm of possibility. It would, however, be very difficult as a lot of Dodgers players are heading into arbitration. 
Not to mention, it'll soon be time to back up the Brinks truck into Cody Bellinger's driveway. Since Mookie did end up turning down some extension offers from the Red Sox, he will most likely end up testing the open market. My money is on him heading to San Diego. The Dodgers also somehow ending up with Graterall in all this mess is good on their part. Graterall could end up being the Nets' Kenley Jansen, or he could be haunted by injuries and not reach his full potential. Honestly, right now it is still up in the air. The Twins got another starter that their rotation needed, and as for the Red Sox, yikes. It's not necessarily that this trade is awful, but it was a necessary evil for the Red Sox to complete after short-sighted decisions from past management. You can't help but feel bad for Red Sox GM Hein Bloom for being thrown into this situation then having to feel the wrath of angry fans for something that wasn't even his fault to begin with. But as an overall trade, it made sense for each team involved. The Dodgers now put forward what is truly their best shot at winning a World Series, the Twins received the starter they wanted as they look for another AL Central crown, and Boston partially hits the reset button as they continue to drown in bad contracts for the next few years. It's a shame that this is one of the biggest trades in baseball history, and it will go down the way it did. Now, every time I look back on the Mookie Betts trade, I won't be looking at it because of the significance of the deal, but what a disaster it truly was for everyone involved. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to drop a like on the video, and if you are new, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on those bell notifications. And let me know in the comments section below what you think about the trade for the Dodgers, and if you think this year will be the year the Dodgers finally win it all. And before I go, really quick, I just wanted to plug my Instagram. I post a lot of baseball stuff over there, so make sure you guys check it out. Links to all my socials will be in the description. But thanks again, everyone, and I will see you all in the next video. Bring me back the pain, bring me back the lateness. Everything will change, turn it into a paradise. Girl, I want your love, didn't reciprocate. Take everything we've done, don't wanna let it go to waste. Bring me back the pain, bring me back the lateness. Everything will change.